Hello, hello everyone. This is EJK here, and uh, I know it's been a while since my last video. Mostly a couple of reasons. I have been having to get ready for going back to school in the fall, and there was also a bunch of qualifiers going on, so I wanted to pay more attention to that. And most of the games, well, mostly all of the games that I've been watching recently have just been kind of bleh. Like, not, like, they're not interesting for me enough to want to uh, make a video about them. So, I actually finally found a good video, or a good series. We're going to be taking a look at the Polt vs. Violet series from the IEM Toronto America Qualifiers that was played last night. And I think it's like the final losers match or something like that. Uh, so... Without further ado, here's the game. And what we're going to be doing here is uh, Violet. He he ended up going. He ended up going. Um, what's it called? Roach Hydra. Every single game. So that's five games of going Roach Hydra in a row. So Violet obviously thinks this is a very legit strategy, and we will see here all the different variety of Roach Hydra builds that uh, the Zerg player has at their arsenal. And Polt, he did his best to defend it. He does a very good counter. He starts building Siege Tanks relatively early. He builds them faster than his third command center, his upgrades. He delays those in favor of getting the fast Siege Tanks out so that against the standard 2-2 Roach Hydra timing, you have like a good 6-7 to seven tanks at the, I think it Roach Hydra hits at like 13 to 14 minute timing depending on how much you can slow them down and that's a big difference from uh, a normal build which would only have uh, three to four siege tanks available so we're gonna be able to take a look at the kind of current metagame trends going on Roach Hydra has become an increasingly popular both on ladder and in tournaments and uh, hopefully by the end of this video or this episode I think I'm gonna split this into multiple parts to make it easier to go through because it might be a long one but hopefully by the end we'll be more familiar with Roach Hydra timings and what it takes to beat Roach Hydra armies and what hap what exactly goes wrong when your army just seems to get overpowered by the seemingly uh, very 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 bleh army comp I personally dislike playing against Roach Hydra a lot because it just seems extremely <sighs> I don't think random's the right word I think very unpredictable it's a lot harder to predict how battles and engagements are gonna go and what you need to do to be able to like take a lead and how you even know when you're in a lead in the first place versus Muta Baneling which is a lot I'm a lot more familiar with I guess so this is just gonna step out my comfort zone and try to become more familiar with the Roach Hydra and hopefully you guys will as well and embrace it as an alternate style that Zerg can do so that I guess it kind of makes the game more interesting too because it gives the Zerg an alternate style besides Muta Baneling that is I think a lot easier to execute APM wise it doesn't require as much APM and keeping on top of injects aren't nearly as important as knowing your timings and knowing the unit compositions and just how you are ahead of your opponent and so forth and so forth so in this game this is a cross positions game on Nimbus we don't have to worry about the close natural air position so for example if Polt was here and Violet was here Violet would have an advantage because the natural is very close if Polt was here and Violet was here then Polt would have the natural uh, air advantage because of the close air spots of the natural so that's pretty much the only big the only like map or positional difference that it's going to be and on cross maps on Nimbus it's going to be mostly a drawn out macro game and we see Polt here he's taking a third command center relatively quickly this is a pretty standard opening by him he's getting his marauder he usually gets a couple of marauders and then he does some harass but I think he's mostly just getting a marauder just because he's he the, from watching the series earlier, he seems to have tailored this build towards Roach Hydra kind of play styles. And I mean, 
it's I think it might be safe to say that Violet and Polt do practice together so Polt most likely has practiced enough against this style to know that it's a very very big threat and his normal style of play is not good enough to be able to contest with this Roach Hydra style. We see here in the first game everything seems pretty normal. Polt is able to scout the lair and he also goes in with the Reaper as well before he scouts. So this confirms that he gets 100% scouting going on. And he all, he sees the lair with the Reaper too. So that scan technically wasn't even necessary. But the important things we can glean from this is that there are two evil chambers. There's a Roach one and there's a fast lair. That means that the Zerg player has skipped speed. And he is most likely going for Roaches. I mean, it's still possible to go Mutalisks, but... If you're going for a Mutalisk build, you would normally be taking a fast, uh, or you'd be getting speed so that you can stay alive long enough, because getting roaches for Mutalisk is just inefficient. And so, Polt decides to go start Siege Tank production because he has confirmed with that Reaper and the scan that he, Violet is in fact doing a one run roach timing. So, Polt already, it's nine minutes in, and he's already starting his first Siege Tank. Violet, he is uh, getting ready for what looks to be a pretty standard 1-1 Roach timing, but I really like Violet's play here because he also gets Tunneling Claws and he's going to get Overlord Drops as well. And uh, if we weigh the pros and cons of it, uh, basically the cons are that you have to research Burrow, you have to research Drops, that's like 300 gas right there, and then you have to research Tunneling Claws as well. And I think that comes out to be around 450. I don't know if Tunneling Claws is 100, 100, or 150, 150. But it's about 400 to 450 minerals and gas investment. So what that does is that delays his hydralisk production and his hive. So that Violet is going to be going for a bit more of an aggressive opening in favor of, or in lieu of going for a faster 2-2 Roach Hydra timing. And we see here... Violet's also delaying his plus two attack and plus two. Oh, well, he just started it now, but he didn't start it immediately. He is prioritizing uh, the tunneling claws, the overlord speed, and the overlord drop, and bo the burrow. Oh, and yeah, the overlord speed. So that's easily 500 gas and 500 uh, minerals investment. And Paul, he's putting a turret here. I really like how he does this, and he's going to do that in every game as well. But I think that's 100% necessary in case Violet does go for burrowed roaches. You need that turret there for detection to be able to see those roaches. Be little pesky buggers. So, if we take note of this attack, <clears throat> uh, and the whole purpose of this is to become more familiar with this roach hydra attack. So, let's, let's open up the handy dandy notepad. And we're going to write Polt versus Violet, game one on Nimbus cross positions. And we are going to, we're going to, basically all of these games are Roach Hydra games. So we don't, we aren't going to be focused so much on scouting it. We're going to be more focused on what the timing is and how to counter this timing. So in order to counter this timing, we first have to understand this timing. And it's OK, so it's 1146. And let's wait until he actually does the attack. And notice how uh, Violet's infestation pit and his hydralisk den go down after all of those upgrades so that they go down significantly slower. And Ugh, I don't know how much time it takes for the Hydralisk upgrade to research, but I'm pretty sure it's about it's at least a minute. So del that that's a pretty uh, slow Roach or a slow Hydralisk den is all I'm trying to say, I guess. So right here, it's a 12 minute and 30 attack with 1-1 one, one burrowed Roaches. So Violet does a 1-1, one, one, uh, does a, yeah, 1-1 one, one burrowed Roach tunneling Claws, Overlord, Drop, Three Pronged Attack that hits at 12 minutes and 30 seconds. And we're just going to round up to the even numbers to make it easier to under process in our heads. So 
that's the basis of the attack. Violet splits off his units. He obviously has uh, a pair of, well, not pair, a cluster of roaches pressuring the main or the main area, and then he's going to be dropping those three overlords worth of roaches and those overlords full of roaches as well. And uh, we're going to see here this is going to do a crazy amount of damage, but Polt doesn't immediately die from it because he does have a lot of tanks available. I think he already has about three to four right now and he also has another tank there. So even though this is doing a lot of damage and Violet's hitting in a, three spots at once, Polt's entire base, every single base of his are compromised right now and he does end up losing a significant amount of SCVs. But to be able to uh, calculate how much damage uh, this attack actually did and how much damage or versus the cost of the investment of these upgrades we would first have to see the SCV count obviously but then we're gonna have to factor in how many additional scans and how many turrets this is gonna force so this forces I believe one turret finished at the third and now there's gonna be another turret at the at the natural however these roaches have not been dealt with yet which is very not good for a pult. And uh, I just want to take note here, the hive is going to start at 1345. Hive starts at 13 minutes and 45 seconds after the push. And hydralisk den, or those, I think those are like, hi and plus one range for hydralisk starts. So let's let's make that a bit neater. So at, at 1345, plus one hydra range and hive starts and I believe we'll also be seeing violet taking a fourth base as well let's just confirm that on the minimap uh, yep there's the drone right there and the fourth base is taken so uh, plus one hydra range and hive starts violet also takes his fourth base so at this point of the game uh, this harassment has been going on for a minute and a half, and it's still going on too. Paul has not been able to fully deal with it, and it's kind of hard to deal with it too because burrowed roaches move so damn fast, even when they're burrowed, and they also regenerate when they're burrowed too. So you really have to make sure you kill them off and are able to get turrets up before you're able to leave the positioning. And what we see here is, uh, do I dare go back? With this VOD. Let's see it. Okay, so I guess this is good enough. Uh, I just want to rewind what's going on so we can focus on the attack now we have now that we have the timings down. So we know that Violet's Hydralisk den is gonna be delayed, and we know that his infestation pit is also gonna be delayed. So what that tells us as a Terran player is that this is gonna be the main aggression for now, and you don't you're not gonna be expecting some sort of Roach Hydra 2-2 timing attack follow up in the immediate future because Hydralisk Den has not even finished yet. You still have to get the Hydralisk upgrades as well. And there's not going to be a Roach Hydra Viper attack anytime soon either because the Hive has not yet started yet as well. So for the most part, Pult's army is just going to have to split up and play defense on all three of his bases. So let's see where his army goes now. He has one part of the army over here. He has another part over here going to deal with the natural. And then there's another one at the third. And at this point, Pol is just caught out of position. Uh, he sends this army over here to deal with the Roaches at the third. I think with better siege tank placement, that would have been able to deal with the Roaches. And then he would have been able to send this army over here towards the main to deal with that. And then there is a force already at the natural to clean, it, clean that f up as well. However... This force at the natural doesn't quite get rid of all of the roaches. It's quite hard to keep track of uh, three different kinds of battles going on at once. So Polt thinks it's done, and he goes immediately towards the main with his uh, with these units, which should technically still be staying at the natural if he was aware that those roaches had not had it, uh, had not been finished off yet. So as we can see here, Polt is down by a significant amount of workers, and uh, he he still has a good economy because of mules, but he's his economy has been delayed a lot. Adding his extra barracks, adding his fourth command center, and really any 
being able to push out anytime soon is going down the drain. So what he needs to do now is turtle up really hard, take a fourth base, and let this uh, economic disadvantage, and that really hurts him as well. Losing an additional, uh, I believe, around five SCVs really hurts at this stage of the game. Uh, Polt also had to burn quite a few scans as well, so he hasn't quite been having as many mules as he would like. And this uh, attack right here, killing the three tanks, is also another significant win for Violet. For the cost of a bunch of roaches that he could produce in an instant, it takes Polt triple that amount of time to build those siege tanks. So, if we take a look at the pros and cons, or uh, what exactly happened, and why Violet is ahead, Let's take a look at the attack. So Violet did a 1-1 one, one Birdworks Tunneling Claws uh, Overlord drop 3-pronged attack that hits at 12.30 at the 3rd base, the 3rd, 2nd, and natural, and 1st base of Polt. So that's a pretty, pretty damn strong attack. And so we know, uh, in hindsight, obviously, I mean, Polt, he's probably never played against this before. Violet probably prepared this as a special tactic. But we know that the majority of Violet's army, to be able to do a three-pronged attack and having that much investment into the Roaches, means that Violet's army is going to be just the Roaches. So if Polt can... If Polt doesn't take too much economic damage from these roaches and he's able to clean them up without losing too many SCVs, he's still going to be in a good position. This is, I'm not going to say it's all in, I'm just going to say it's a lot more aggressive than a uh, standard Roach Hydra 2 2 timing because it hits earlier and it cuts economy and tech in order to do economic damage. Uh, from the Zerg player's point of view. So as a Terran player, if you can defend this with minimal losses and Polt doesn't have a turret up at his third, which really sucks. Okay, now it's going up, but it's way too late. Those roaches are still going to be able to do a lot of damage. I think Polt really needed to add turrets at each of his bases a lot sooner than this because now he's going to lose even more SCVs. Really, I think if he... Uh, was able to prevent the roaches at the natural from popping back up and doing damage and then uh, the roaches at the third from doing some more damage like that then he would have been in an okay position the supplies also reflect that uh, statement as well Pult is only down 28 supply if he'd lost 10 less scvs he'd be in a much more even position we see here violet's first vipers are going to be out on the map very soon so at this point, Violet's strategy has worked because he has managed to slow down Polt's economy long enough for Violet to get out his Vipers in a safe fashion. So Violet, during this time, Violet has not had to worry about drops. He's not had to worry about multi-pronged attacks or a big frontal attack with the siege tanks. And he's in a very, very safe, or he's in just a safe, economic, greedy kind of position. We see Polt here doing the best he can to trade with what he's got. He really has to do something, and I don't blame him for trying to do that. Uh, however, he does get pushed back. And we see classic Polt. He has one part of the army here and another part there doing a two-pronged attack. But even though he traded cost inefficiently over there with that army to pull the army back as far as possible, but the Roach Hydra DPS was just too much and he wasn't able to get in position with these two drops as fast as he'd like so these weren't able to do that much damage and to really get him back in the game uh, and he loses that medevac too which is not good and then he's gonna get this abducted which I also hate that the Zerg player can do that as well so Polk just lost about 20 supply for free there and two drop ships. if he had not lost that he would have pinned Violet back uh, slightly longer and maybe bought himself some more time to be able to take a maxed out fight. Polt, he's going to be sending those two medevacs, but he's already down 20 supplies, so uh, losing those two medevacs was pretty game ending here because he just doesn't have the army supply available to be able to prevent this attack from doing game ending damage. And we see here nice abducts, and there's just way too much that Violet has. I think if Polt had. Uh, the 20 supply worth of medevacs or uh, army that he didn't lose this would have been a much closer fight and also since he's pushing in the 
natural and he's also able to get the hive for free without much cost I would say this attack right here for Paul would have been a great position for him if he hadn't lost the first two medevacs earlier on <clears throat> but now as a result he's just miles behind he has almost no economy whereas Violet's still on three bases Violet's taking his fourth base now <clears throat> and uh, the game is pretty much over because Paul he took too much damage from the roaches and then he also lost his drops as well without making them very efficient and uh... let's just say those supplies reflect the how the end of the game is going to go and uh, move on to the second game because i don't want to spend more time kind of watching a dead game than I have to because there's a lot of there's a lot of information here uh... i'm gonna what i'm gonna do is no, I'll keep I'll keep it recording. That wasn't too long, and I'll just like have the time mark for uh, the games to like separate them and stuff. If you guys want to watch them individually, so game one, uh, VOD time is 21 minutes up to 21 zero two. Okay, yeah. So now Pult is dead. GG is called, and now we jump into game number two on King Sejong Station. Now. When I was th uh, watching this game, I believe this is one of the games where Polt gets a good Hellion Rumbai in, and I think that's really important to try to do against a Roach kind Roach based play because you don't have fast speedlings, you only have queens for defense, and sometimes Zerg players get slightly too greedy and they try to squeeze out slightly, like they don't have enough queens and transfuses, or they're out of position trying to like keep your Hellions away from hitting the third base and you're able to just whoop 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 dodge them and go straight to the mineral line and start your barbecue Sunday. Let's see nothing nothing too odd going on here oh so while this game is going let's type in the info for this game so game two uh, VOD I guess it starts at uh, 22 minutes to whenever so Roach, it's still Roach Hydra games. Uh, game t game one. Okay, so I should I should organize this better. This should be here. There we go. All right, so that's the first game. This is game two. So Polt versus Violet. Game two at King Sejong station uh, game two okay then we can delete that all right so now <clears throat> I'm trying I'm not I'm trying to focus on both the Zerg player and the Terran player so uh, I guess it, like to understand how to beat Roach Hydra you have to become comfortable against playing Roach Hydra and you become more comfortable playing against Roach Hydra by understanding the decision making of the Zerg player and then you kind of create anti-timings to what the Zerg player is trying to do with his timings so uh, by that I mean and we're gonna see it later in this series when Violet does a 2-2 attack with Roach Hydra Polt is gonna be able to like He's going to fail once because he, he his tanks were mispositioned and they weren't firing in the fight. And he's going to succeed, Polt that is, he's going to succeed in the last game because of uh, just being able to, uh, because his build was tailored toward hitting an anti-defensive timing against this 2-2 Roach attack that seems to crush a lot of Terran souls on ladder and in tournaments. So we see here Violet once again opening up for a gasless expand. The Reaper not doing much of anything, just jaywalking on the creep basically. So if we take a look at Violet's opening, and I'm not really going to do say anything about Pulse because it's very standard. Two Reapers, Reactor in the factory, and then I believe a third command center will come down pretty soon. Uh, so if we look at Violet's opening, he's immediately opened up pool first. And then he's gotten he got two queens and now he's getting two more queens. So what this tells us is that he's gonna have a very, very defensive opening. 
getting four queens this fast doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to push creep spread out. What it does mean is that the fewer the creep tumors that you do put out are going to be a lot safer, and you're also going to have a couple transfuses available as well. So we see Violet. Uh, taking his two gases after four queens. Notice he did not go up to six queens. That would kind of be, I think, a bit much, and that would delay his tech too much. So Violet goes up to four queens, and he's still making drones right now. He's made an initial, like, I don't know, like eight zerglings, and he's just been making drones, and he's taking his gases. Violet is playing as greedy as greedy as can get. Okay, so pull here. I lied. He didn't go for a third command center. Big whoop. I don't have an eidetic memory. What he does go for is a starport and his Hellions. This is a much more. Uh, this is a standard opening by him. Silly me, I think Polt goes for an innovation styles third CC. No, Polt always gets his third CC really late and always gets the Viking out fast. And there's the Viking. And we see here the Reaper Scout coming in uh, at about 650. He doesn't really see much because the Reaper does get damaged. He does see the layer though which is great news for him. So he knows that at this point, uh, I just want to... So on this game, I'm going to be emphasizing running by with Hellions and trying to do damage because this Zerg player, Violet, he's being a greedy, is greedy, greedy, greedy motherfucker. He made four queens. He has pure drone production. He's getting a lair, and he's getting a third hatchery and he has literally zero eunuchs except for the four queens and a couple speed link or a couple zerglings not even speed links made early on and we see here violet doesn't even have a full wall off yet he doesn't have the double evos and the roach warren so he's violet is playing absolutely greedy out of his mind and this is the kind of thing that you need to identify and if you do identify it you can take a decent advantage and this is kind of funny violet opened up this uh this wall quite early and so Pult's able to kind of just skirt through uh, that's just I don't even know what to say <laughs> but uh, the same can be done from the other side it's just a little bit harder basically what you want to do is get the Queens out of position long enough so that there's like a little hole so that they're not blocking it and then just run straight into the drone line and then do your stuff so this worked out a lot better for Pult than it should have because Violet took down those rocks really really fast and uh, this is the kind of advantage that if you can get as a Terran player uh, early on with these Hellions then you're gonna be in full command of this game and you're gonna be able to uh, do a follow-up push with uh, bio tank to end the game before Vipers get out however if you don't do economic damage or you don't like hold an all-in or something and the game is even it, it's gonna be in Zerg's favor because uh, <clears throat> he's gonna have the just kind of he's gonna be able to get his vipers out and you're gonna have to deal with them in big engagements and it's gonna come down to a lot more positional play as we'll see later now, that hellion harass not only did kill 17 drones but also forced out a bunch of useless circlings 12 in fact so those could have been six more drones of in that's six drones of indirect damage and we see here, Polt, he knows with the Hellions, he knows that Violet's going for 1-1 one, one Roaches again. So we see here, oh, it was just on the production tab, but basically Polt was making a siege tank. He started siege tank production before he started his, uh, or before he starts his 1-1 one, one upgrades. See, there's a second siege tank on the production tab, and he still hasn't started 1-1 one, one upgrades yet. So he already has, he's going to have two siege tanks out. Or he's gonna have his second siege tank started before his one one upgrade start. So this is a such a hard counter to what Violet is doing. Uh, and we see here it's ten minutes in, and Polt is already gonna have two siege tanks basically. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Well, about ten thirty, I guess. And we what we see here is Polt. He's able to do a lot more damage with these drops. I mean, of course, he's he d did the same kind of drop patterns with double medevacs earlier on on Nimbus in the set. But the reason why this is doing a lot more damage is because Polt was able to take a pretty big economic lead and Violet's just playing catch up right now. So these drones that are being made now should uh, Violet would have liked them to be units and then like the units just come a whole cycle of drones later and it allows you to find openings that your medevacs can abuse as a Terran player and you can just chip away a lot at the Zerg's forces and then be able to kind of like snowball that into a good attack and kill him. 
we see oh so we see here this is uh violet's one one timing attack or no 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 yeah yeah yeah, yeah. this is uh violet the violet does a one one speed roach opening into the mid game and if we take a look at his infestation pit it's almost done so his infestation pit started um uh, I would say about 10:30-ish, 10:30-ish, uh, into the game, and uh, bu 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 bu. at 10:30, infestation pit starts before 2:2 upgrades and the hydralisk den. That's how fast the infestation pit is, FYI. It's before the hydralisk den and it's before 2-2 so what this tells us is that violet's going to be going for he's not going to be hitting a 2-2 roach timing he's going to be doing a uh, different kind of timing with in this game he goes in festers which is uh not too sure why he does that yeah he goes in festers here but i think it is a good alternative and i think his plan is to go in fester hydralisk uh, roach and then transition into some sort of fester broodlord hydralisk play which is pretty scary if you can get that going with the right economy. But Pult's not going to let that happen. He's too good for that. So we see here, this is what normally when the 1-1 one, one Roach timing would hit. The Roach speed has just about finished up. But Violet is getting in Festers instead. Oh, and I should write that down, that he goes in Festers. Uh, an infestation pit starts before 2-2 two, two in the Hydra land. To rush out in Fest. No, infestation starts before 2-2. Two, two. And infestors start before the hydralisk den is completed. So this is not a fast hive play. This is a alternative layer play, aka getting the infestors. And uh, the reason why Violet gets this fourth base over here is because it's a lot more easily defendable uh, than this base. So let's say, for instance, you're gonna do a double drop to the fourth base so you're going to do double drop here and then you're going to do double drop like here like the two extremes of the map what violet can do is he can camp his army at his natural and he can reinforce his main his fourth and his third so 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 fast as opposed to having a fourth here and having a main there then it would be a lot more of a distance to uh, reinforce both of the edges but this makes it just positionally a lot easier to defend the fourth base with the army that Violet has. Uh, and we see Hive starting at, oh, I'm going to call that at 13 minutes. Pult starting his second factor, by the way, at about 13 minutes. So he recognizes how important uh, tanks are. He's uh, So timing-wise, Hive starts at 13 minutes. I'm not really keeping track of Pult's timings because they're, I think they're a lot more straightforward. And what we want to do is understand the different kinds of Roach Hydra timings that Violet does. So we're, this game is a bit more focused on Violet's aspect of play, his timings. And then what Pult has at that timing is to like uh, just kind of create those anti-timings to what Violet's trying to do. So he has the infestors, nice fungal growth, catches that speed medevac, but pull he's able to push the creep. And keep in mind, this is all this all comes down from losing almost the twenty drones early on. Pult is able to just outmaneuver Violet a lot because Violet's army is a lot smaller than it should be right now. And that's the only reason why Pult's able to clear creep like this with and he's able to get away with it as well. Uh very, very risky drop here. Pult's just trying to keep the army on his side of the map. So the Spire is starting now and I believe that would have been for Broodlords had the game gone on longer. Uh, Pult is starting his fourth command center at about 14 minutes and 50 seconds. I think it's a very pretty standard timing. Notice though how Pult hasn't moved out yet. He's kind of waiting to be maxed out but what he is doing is he's using uh, two groups of his bio ball one over here and one over here and he's pressuring the extremes of the map and right now uh, part of Violet's force is going over here to chase that and as a result he's gonna lose the fourth base because he doesn't see it in time if Violet did have like 17 larva worth of army he would have easily been able to defend this area and shove that fourth back as well 
So this is kind of just, and then that happens, which is a pretty big game ender. But this is kind of a result of just a snowballing effect that Polk gets as a result of sacrificing those Hellions and getting so much economic damage done. He's just able to snowball this game and all of Violet's timings are in fact going to be off. And so uh, the next thing we're going to be focused on, I guess, the la last thing that happens is the, the kill move. So when does Polt move out? He's going to move out now at about 175 supply. It's basically maxed out. I would say 180-ish is maxed out because you it's not a bad idea to keep some of your supply at home in case of counterattacks or to like set it up for a drop or something. And Polt's able to just steamroll this army without even needing any of his tanks. He had zero tanks in that. So he was able to fight a Roach Hydra army with pure bio and just absolutely wreck that. And right now, Violet, he tried to transition into Broodlords. He made those nine Corruptors right before the fight, which are in fact going to be pretty useless against this Vile Ball with nothing to support the Broodlords uh, beneath them. And uh, Yeah, so uh, the supplies really reflect the game going on right now. And I think any Terran player would be happy to secure this kind of a advantage and to get a fourth base up so not only is he up in supply he's up in one base as well so this is like this having the fourth base and being up so much supply really just secures the win and gg is called without pull even having to use he's still he was still making siege tanks two at a time but he never really had to use them because violet was just so far behind from the beginning and that's uh that's what happens like that's the sequence of moves that you can do to be able to kill the zerg player going for roach hydra if you're able to get a hellion run by in so it's always important after you id that there's like there's he the, the zerg player is playing kind of greedy and violet was playing kind of greedy he had no units all he had was like four queens out on the map and Polt was able to run by yes nathanius is saying exactly what i'm saying that's my arm movements and everything but yeah so just ha just being able to do that amount of damage early on and then there that opens up a sequence of kill moves and it oh, it counts down like when you start doing the medevac pressure and you can just kind of rip the zerg player apart but you can only do that if you have an advantage that's the most important aspect of it like if you didn't do any damage or you didn't do enough damage with a hellion run by then you're not going to be able to do that and you're going to have to like do a siege tank push and you're gonna most likely gonna have to fight against vipers or in this case it would have been fast brood lords which is also a counter to siege tanks so so far this is game three and in game one violet did a 111 burrowed roach attack in game two violet did a roach hydra mid game and he was planning on going for infester broodlord strategy on four bases kind of like a very fast rush so like a very very unique game plan and these are all roach hydra based plays but they are not the same they're all they all branch out differently into different kinds of timings that violet can hit and I guess the benefit of going for Roach Hydra is if you know all of these, like if you know a bunch of different timings, you're going to be able to mix up your play a lot more. It's kind of like going for like just a few mutalisks and mass banelings, going for mass mutalisks, or going for a fast hive and going for like fast ultra baneling uh, in the mutal baneling style. It's just using different unit compositions to improve a timing window. Uh, we see here Violet opening up with the gas first. He is not playing as greedy but I believe this game he does a roach push that doesn't actually do that as much damage as it should have uh, right here excuse me <sighs> it's getting late uh, right here um, we see very standard play we don't see any standard play anymore when the roach one comes down and this is a very very fast road one. I'm gonna say it's 4:45. Just like take notes still. Pult versus Violet, game three at Overgrowth LE. Uh, it's time of the VOD. Uh, 30. Uh, I'm gonna say 40 minutes. So to 40 minutes. 
All right, so overgrowth LE uh, 440 Violet opens up with a gas first and starts a Roach Warren at four minutes and 45 seconds before speed. That is a very, very fast Roach Warren. And to uh, just to like illustrate how fast it is, if you look on the production tab right now, Violet is cutting drones a lot. So he has like 22 drones right now. He has 16, 19, and then 20, 21. Yeah, he has a total of 21 drones right now and he's still he's not making any drones right now so this is a very this is pretty all in by violet and he really has to do a lot of economic damage for this to work uh, Pult, on the other hand he i guess like Pult's build is optimized enough to be able to stop this uh Pult hasn't scouted if violet is researching speed or not though i think Pult is just assuming that it's going to be speed but Pult knows that this timing is a possibility so what we're gonna see here is kind of like a little poke out with the Reaper very shortly to check for this kind of a timing and this is what makes Pult such a good player uh, right now this there's gonna be a Reaper that pops up out there we go and he's gonna go to the watchtower and he's gonna see this army move out so Pult knows his timings down to the wire he checks the watchtower he's able to see the zerglings and then he's able to see the roaches on the minimap really fast before uh before the zerglings deny the overlord vision so now Pult knows this is coming so what Pult did there was a reaper poke out at about six minutes and 40 seconds and he was able to confirm that there is in fact a roach push coming out and now he's going to be able to kind of like brace himself for the impact a lot sooner than as if uh violet was, had gotten a much bigger surprise on him. So we see here, let's see how many units Pult is going to lose. He lost one SCV. He loses two SCVs. He loses uh, the bunker. Okay. Two SCVs in a bunker. And a Hellion. And a Reaper. And maybe a couple more SCVs. He doesn't really lose a lot of SCVs. And for the amount of uh, unit, for the amount of economy that Violet sacrificed, ten roaches and killing less than five SCVs for it in just a couple units, I would say that Pult held this off fairly well, and that he's going to be in a similar position as he was in game number two when he did that Hellion run by. We see here Violet's still up by eleven workers, but he's very very far behind. He just got that saturation so he was he like he's he's going to be catching up economically now but before that he was very very far behind because of all the economy he cut getting those roaches out at like less than 25 drones so we see here there's a big opening if uh Paul checked in and like saw this he would have immediately run by because he's going to be looking for those kinds of openings unfortunately Paul does this a bit too slow and there are roaches out in time. Violet, he's not going to be playing as greedy as he was in the first game because he knows he's behind. He knows this is a possibility. And having those roaches there. Pult still tries to run by, but there's just too many units out for Violet. So that it's covered. He can't. He has to cut his losses, and he's not going to do a run by. But he did check for the uh, run by option is all I'm trying to illustrate, I guess. And we see here, Pult, he's going for a double engineering base and a command center. This game, he doesn't feel the need to start a uh, siege tank as fast. I think that's because of how the opening started. He is starting a siege tank now, but he, he got, like, in the, I think the first game, in the second game, he started siege tank production before... 1-1 one, one, and before the third command center but now he's kind of delayed it until around the time that the third command center is going to finish he's uh last game he had two siege tanks by about the 10 minute 30 minute 10 minute 30 second mark now he's going to be starting his first siege tank about that time but he does have a good amount of units at home to defend against this and i believe violet does not have 1-1 one, one either so this is a very all-in push by him uh Observer, can you just click the roach? No, 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 no. Could you, could you just click the roach, please? Oh, oh well. So this is a one-one. So Violet, he's following this up with a one-one, or no, I don't think it's a one-one roach timing. I think it's a eleven-minute speed roach all in because Violet doesn't have his third base saturated. So Pult's siege tank just happens to pop out at the best possible time, and I'm pretty sure that's almost on purpose because. 
Catapult doesn't need at he doesn't need like multiple siege tanks to defend this. Just one, and he'll be fine because of how all in Violet is with this attack and how far behind he is. Um, all right, so and then Violet transitions into a three base. Uh, 11 minute speed roach timing all in roach time I'm just gonna say timing but he made it all in because he overcommitted to it without replenishing his drone and economy so yeah this tech basically did nothing and Pult's able to stop this handily he has only four marauders a handful of marines and the roaches but the, it was excellent sim city and he, the bunker is not even able to go down and GG is called because there's nothing really else that Violet can do. He was already too far behind from the what happened earlier on in the game. I'm pretty sure Violet didn't have 1-1 one, one either. That's another reason why he GG'd. Alright, so this game, this ended at uh, 46 minutes. 46. Very short game. Alright, so let's take a look at the next game, guys. Natanius and Rotterdam. Alright. So there's two more games left. This goes to a 3-2. Pult wins. Spoilers. Sorry I didn't say that before. Violet going for a 15 pull. He's kind of afraid of Pult potentially 2 raxing, But Pult doesn't end up doing a 2 rax in this series. Coincidentally. I guess he's going to save it for when it actually counts. Like when there's a lot of money on the line perhaps. We see Pult, he's not actually opening up for a, this was kind of like a 15 gas opening almost. No, never mind, I, I'm lying, that was a 12 gas, he's going for Reapers, no, I don't, I don't know what I'm saying. Yeah, he's going for Reapers, I don't know why I thought, like sometimes the gas looks really late when it's at a normal time. I'm just losing my mind, it happens when you play too much StarCraft. Alright, so... Pull SCV scouts because it is a three player map. You want to know where your opponent is as soon as possible. And he's actually going to get really lucky and scout first. And he's going to be able to send his Reaper there. He's going to know that's a 15 pool as well, so that he won't have to worry about. Uh, what some Zerg players will do is they'll make a bunch of Zerglings, and if you scout them in last position with your Reaper, the Zerglings can skirt by the Reaper and like almost force a cancel on the command center if it's built on the low ground so it's really fortunate that Pult scouted in this direction first and he got lucky so he's able to see these zerglings come out yep there we go and these zerglings are gonna ha be able to do no damage for violet so yeah that's kind of just a bit of luck working out in Pult's favor of course violet is still in a very good position because he did get that queen first or he got the first queen out a lot faster so he's gonna start his injects faster as well so he's not really gonna be very far behind as you'd think from delaying your hack tree in favor of a pool first we see Pult. he's going for very very standard three reaper opening he seems to like three reapers on a lot of maps but other times he'll just get two i'm not quite sure what the reason is behind it i haven't looked too closely in it but i think he just likes three reapers in general because of the harassment option and like the scouting option later on as well. Uh, we see here Pult, he's not going to be getting the third command center. He is going to be getting the third command center. If he has enough minerals, is he going to be getting the third command center? I think so. He should be. And the minerals just keep getting higher. Oh boy. Is he going to get a third command center? This is crazy. Okay, no, he doesn't get a third command center. He does his normal build. Jesus. Alright, but Violet, on the other hand, he's opened up for a gasless expansion, and now he's getting his gases kind of late. So, if you take note, uh, Violet on King Sejong Station, he opened up Hatch first, and he went into two queens, and then two more queens, and then made two extractors. This is a similar opening by Violet on this map as well uh, except he opened up 15 pool but he's still gonna get the two gases around the six minute mark before taking his third base and he's only going up to four queens as well he's not making additional queens uh, but I just want to label this game Pull for 
Christmas Violet Game 4 on Merry Go Round. Uh, I'm going to say like 46 minutes. Alright. There we go. So, Violet's opening up very similarly to what he did on King Sejong Station. And I think this is a pretty safe opener for the Zerg player. It's pretty defensive and I think it's the most common opener if you're going to be transitioning into 1-1 one, one Roach play. Like, if you're getting Ro if you're going Roach Hydra, there's really no need for getting speedlings. They're not is they're not useful at all and they just take up a lot of larva. So it makes your it makes your it makes Roach Hydra really inefficient if you do get speedlings and you open speedling opener. I think it's also unnecessarily safe as well. So we see here Violet, he's droning up, he's getting that really fast layer, he's getting those two evil chambers, so the layer before speed, uh, I wish there was like a pro league scan available so we could see if uh, he's Polt scans, but no, Polt instead, I think Polt tried to poke in with one of the Reapers, but he now he has the Reapers at the third bases, and he's going to be looking for a, since he knows that speed is delayed, uh, because there's no third base, so the first hundred gas went into a layer. He knows that the Zerg player is kind of playing super greedy right now, so he's going to try to do his best to get a Hellion run by. But if Violet's on top of his game, it should not happen. However, as a Terran player, this is the time when you purposely look for a way to sacrifice your Hellions. And like right now, right now, if no, 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 go back, go back, go back, right now, like the queens are kind of out of position. If there's nothing blocking the ramp right now, then Pult's run by could do a ton of damage and there we go but violet's too good for this shit he has a queen over there that's almost gonna die that was a really clutch transfuse by violet and he also had a second one available as well if he didn't have that then the run by would have gone through and pult would have been in a great position I like this Viking go coming out, and now this is an even game again, I would say, because no player has done a significant amount of damage. Rumbai denied again by the Roaches, but right now we see Pult, he's making Siege Tanks a lot earlier now because it is an even game. He has to build up that Siege Tank count a lot faster to be able to secure his third base against this 2-2 Roach Hydra timing that's coming out really soon. We see here Pult starting his second Siege Tank before... Uh, the two Ebays start their plus one, plus one. I don't even think the Ebays are down yet. And he's starting a second Siege Tank before the third Command Center is even close to being done. It still has a still has, still has has a lap left to go. Yep, there's the two Ebays. So Pult seems to build tanks a lot earlier if he has not been able to do economic damage. And he seems to uh, go lesser on the tanks and more mobility if he's been able to take a lead of some sort earlier on in the game but this game is a very even game I would say neither player has been able to do significant economic damage so we're gonna be able to see kind of like an anti or a much more standard textbook Roach Hydra game um, let me just take timings of this so 1-1's one finished 1-1 one one with speeds finished at about 1030 I'm just gonna put 1030 I think it actually finished sooner fuck my life to go back on the freaking VOD. Alright, so the Hydradun though, we can at least check out when the Hydradun starts. But yeah, this is a very, a much more standard timing. 1-1 uh, one, one speed roaches with like no economic damage taken into a roach hydra push and then into roach hydra viper. Just a ton of possibility, but Vilas also not doing anything tricky. And two bunkers going down, Pult is extremely afraid of this. Uh, bu 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 bu. Yeah, I would say two bunkers is warranted, definitely. Especially on this kind of a map where it's harder to like pull your SCVs like it was on Overgrowth. You could flood the natural a lot faster, but it's going to take a lot more time on merry-go-round. So I would say it's map dependent, making one or two bunkers. Oh, oh, oh okay. So looks like speed is going to finish at ten minutes. So pull is going to pull usually it gets in an even game two siege tanks by the about the 10 minute mark just fyi so violet opens up 15 uh, pool into a four queen fast lair one one roach speed uh 10 minute one one speed roach timing uh 
let's see when his hydrogen starts. It should start soon. Violet has plenty of money too. Gosh. There we go. Hydrogen starts at 10:15. Hydrogen starts at 10:15. At at 10:15, hydrogen starts. So if we just take a look and compare the other openings that Violet did. In the first game, he his hydralisk den started at 13.45. Okay, well, the hydro, his plus one hydro range started at that, and hive started at 13.45. But at this time in the game, at 12.30, he was getting 1-1 one, one broad roaches. The second game, he did a slightly slower speed roach opening. It hit slower because of the economic damage done from the Hellion run by. In the third game, he did a 11-minute speed roach timing from an all-in of the like 10 for speed and does a 10 roach rush, uh, and then Violet transitions into that. Yeah, so it's 11 minute, and now Violet. This is another very standard game, and we see he's going into the very textbook roach hydro play here, and it's 10 minute. Uh, speed roaches, so that's why Polt has a second tank out by the 10 minute ish mark. That's his third siege tank building on the production screen. I've been keeping track, and it's specifically designed to his Polt modified his build specifically to have in two siege tanks for this kind of a poke. And then, what not only does the siege tanks help defend, but they also help Polt to take his third base a lot faster than normal, too. Uh, Polt's able to scout that there is no fast hive or no infestation pit. I guess plus one range, I guess, starts at 11 minutes. 11-ish. Um, plus one hydro range starts at 11 minutes. So this is the fastest that plus one hydro range uh, has actually started. So this, is, this means that he's going to be doing... Violet, that is, is going to be doing something very Roach Hydra heavy uh, in the mid game. It's, it's very important to understand all the different timings that open up. Like when you see one one or like double Evos in a Roach Warren, you got to understand that there are different specific timings that the Zerg player can hit with Roach Hydra, and that's hopefully what this VOD is showing you guys. Uh, the versatility of what Roach Hydra can do, but also the underlying theme that, that the Terran player needs, like the core core defenses to be able to hold against this stuff, such as Polt making the Siege Tanks a lot earlier. He starts them before his 1-1 one, one starts, so he doesn't prioritize upgrades as much. Uh, the little medevac poke going out right there. But Polt, he's able to, he's ha landed his third base at before 12 minutes and 30 seconds so he wasn't delayed too much which is good for him uh, part of the fact because he had a lot of siege tanks earlier on he's getting a second factory right now and he's continuing siege tank production ooh violet's uh, infestation pit starts I'm gonna say 1230 starts no, I'm gonna I'm gonna say hive starts at whatever time. I think hive is more important than infestation pit right now. I don't think it's gonna start until after this attack though. So Paul, uh, he's not able to do as much. He can't really double poke. These positions are a lot closer for Paul, like to his third base. So he has to kind of stay in a much more defensive positioning. Also notice how that's Paul's third defensive bunker going down at this open area. So Paul really knows that he needs extra defense to hold on this kind of a terrain because of how open it is and how easy you can get concaves going on. Yeah, so the hive hasn't even started yet. I don't know why Violet made that infestation pit so fast. Because he's do yeah, he's doing a 2-2 two -two layer attack and he has an infestation pit, so it's kind of random. This is just bad macro by Violet. But you are forgiven a lot more for shitty micro with Roach Hydra than you are for Muta Baneling. Alright, so this is the engagement time. Violet is freaking maxed out by 14 minutes. 2-2 two is about to finish. The hive's just on its way. So Violet hits a 200-200, 2, -200, two, -two uh, Roach Hydra timing attack and starts hive 
let me rephrase that at at 14 minutes violet attacks with 200 200 two two roach hydra and starts hive I should I should change that the other timings at it just looks cooler I think uh, I'll do that I'll change that after no I'll change it now fuck me F O C D. Uh, duh, 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 duh. At ten thirty, Violet does a one-one speed roach opening into the mid game and and infestation pits and hive. Okay, the mid game hive starts at thirteen min. No, oh, no, at thirteen. Hive starts. Uh, infestation pit and infestors start before the hydro stem is completed. So, hive starts. Uh, hive starts now, but after infestors and pathogen glands were researched. So that's a defensive timing. This is an aggressive timing we're seeing here in this game. Uh, okay, so that. Uh, at 4.45, Violet opens up with a gas first and, uh, or a, f a fast gas and starts a roach warren and does a 10 and saves up larvae to do a 10 roach rush. At 11 minutes, Violet does a three base ro speed roach all in. Oh, this looks so much better. If you guys uh, just skip the time, if yeah, you can just skip ahead in the video, I guess, when I'm doing this because it's not on the stream. Uh, and then now we're on merry go round. So, okay, now we're all caught up. So this is the moment of truth here. So this is a, a lot of people scream Roach Hydra OP is fucking shit. Truth of the matter is, uh, neither player has done a lot of damage. Oh shit, I didn't see one by taking his fourth, but never mind about that. I don't think that's nearly as important as this attack. Uh, Paul, I don't think he's ever going to be maxed out. Uh, the ro this Roach Hydra, like it's just design. You're designed to have more supply than your opponent, but with a defender's advantage, you should be able to hold as a Terran player. So let's see how this fight goes. Pretty freaking scary attack, if you ask me. So one bad thing that happens here is that Paul he has the siege tanks spread out really well, but I wouldn't say these siege tanks are actually being helpful. There is two siege tanks right there and then one on the high ground that are doing absolutely jack shit so there's like three right there that don't really do anything until the entire army is dead so like Polt Polt lose it Polt isn't fighting Polt's okay Polt's army is in the right place but his siege tanks are not part of the fight it's essentially like Vikings not firing when they're supposed to to like they're just idling by and waiting like those siege tanks in the back all of them like it's nice that they were spread out like that but because they were spread out uh, da, da, da. yeah because there, there's so many in the back spread out like that they're not all gonna hit at the same time and the like half of the siege tanks didn't start actually hitting until Polt's entire bio army had melted like until after the a Roach Hydra army had broken through those three bunkers. I think if Paul had all of his siege tanks in a much better position, so that they were all hitting about now, like if they were all in this spot, it would have been it would have done a lot more damage to this concave. But right now, we there's like three siege tanks not hitting right now, and Paul's bio force is already destroyed. So that's pretty much why Paul ends up losing this game. Uh, his siege tanks were just out of position and they took too long to come to the fight and be actually useful. So it's very technical. Like, Paul had the right build. He didn't take any damage. He wasn't behind or anything. But his siege tanks were not in the right position 
and they weren't firing immediately so as a result Violet's able to win the battle so it's very very it's a very small mistake but v very unforgiving as well which saddens my heart Terran's so hard to play all right so the last game is on overgrowth yippee spoilers Pult wins there's Violet game five on no Catalina I think I said overgrowth. Uh, 105. 2, whatever. 2, 105. Coolio. So, Violet opens up 15 pool again. So, Violet opens up 15 pool into... I'm gonna. I'm just going to take a wild guess right now. He's going to get 4 queens, and he's going to get 2 extractors around 6 minutes, and then he's going to get a fast lair with his first 100 gas. That's pretty much his ma what his main opening has been this entire series. And since we've been focusing on what Violet is doing, it kind of gives us a better idea and understanding of how like Violet builds up his economy and where weak points are, such as when to run your Hellions by and when to start making units, how to take advantage of basically what the Zerg's doing by understanding what the Zerg player is doing. To, n to beat your enemy, you must know your enemy. Some famous person said that, and I don't remember who. Or like, keep your friends... No. Yeah, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. That's I like that saying, too. So, like, let's say all the Zerg players are your enemies, so keep them closer. So, like, know your know your enemies more th better than you know your friends. That's how uh, well you should know your enemies. Reaper Scout doesn't see anything and what do we see here violet doing the exact same opening that he did on mario go round so pull into four queen fast layer into oh shit hold on uh at 10 minutes hydrolis gun starts no uh, one one speed roaches timing and hydrolis gun starts Six minute ex double extractor before third. So at ten fifteen. Okay, there we go. Into yep, Violet making four queens. Easy, easy, easy. Very nice when you can start like predicting what the Zerg player is gonna do. Uh, and his extractor should come down relatively soon as well after he becomes extremely greedy we see Pult he's doing his regular gas first bill he's gonna get a star pour he's gonna get that viking out and uh, Pult still sees no gas being taken so he knows it's a late gas build <clears throat> so it really puts a lot of pressure off of Pult you don't have to worry about any all-ins or anything seven more drones oh two extractors and looks like they're gonna be finished right around the six minute mark on to Double extractors. Starts mining gas at six minutes. No, I'm gonna say start. Double extractors. Layer starts at some time whenever he gets his hundred gas. And Violet's also delaying his third base as well. So he's fully saturating his two bases with four queens and then he's gonna go up to a third base he's not rushing it out Paul going for a different build Hellion Banshee which I think it's a good mix-up for him it gives you it's a different it hits a different timing window with the Banshees and the Hellions to be able to take advantage of the kind of general def weak defenses alright so that layer is at like 640 640 ish 645 layer starts um, 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 um. For third 6.5 layer starts. Cool. Alright, and then we see the third after the layer starts, so double extractor before third. Yeah. So layer starts and third base. And we see the double Evo chambers. Starts and third base is third taken is taken okay 
So let's focus on the game again. So Violet's opened up pretty predictably here. Uh, the only difference he's done is he's made a couple spore crawlers in defense of the cloak banshees that are incoming. Oh, he didn't even see anything. That's kind of odd. I guess he must have seen it with an overlord or something, or I don't. I don't even know. Or it's just good reaction by Violet. Either way, uh, we see Paul. He's starting his very, very fast siege tanks again. Once again, he started siege tanks before he started his third base. That's how freaking fast he's starting his siege tanks. He's not taking this shit very lightly. He's really, really doing his best to like play as efficiently with his build as possible. We see here Banshee's not able to do much, but Polt still, he has one siege tank already. And I believe he hasn't started his double upgrades either. So this is an overall theme of like what your base build should be in order to stop this kind of Roach Hydra attacks. You want to have a better siege, a higher siege tank count faster, and that's why you start the siege tanks very very fast and once again Polt's gonna have a second siege tank by the time this 1-1 one, one roach timing is ready which should be at about 10 minutes 30 seconds I just love how I'm like becoming familiar with all of these timings and I hope you guys do become familiar with all of these timings as I am from watching this video and explaining it too because like knowing these timings oh Nidus Worm Nidus Worm. Knowing these timings really makes it a lot easier to like just know what's going on in the game so you don't feel so lost. Nidus Worm starts. Alright, so Violet's changing it up a little bit. Normally, like the um uh the the the, the, the Hydralis den would start about now, but Violet is once again again delaying his Hydralis den in favor of getting some sort of weirdo thing. And it's not Overlord drops, it's a Nidus Worm this time. But Paul, he's too good for this. He ends up scouting it with his Banshee, which is like, heh, <laughs> just kind of really like, I don't know. I don't know, like, if he didn't scout it, if that would I, if that would have made a difference, maybe it would have, because he didn't have a depot there before. So it might have made a difference. It, Paul might have gotten slightly lucky that he was able to scout it, and immediately Violet starts his Hydralis Den after the Nidus Worm gets scouted, because he knows it's not going to work. At 11 minutes, Hydralis then starts. So Violet's essentially just going to go into a 2-2 Roach Hydra timing like he did in the previous game. Except we're going to see a little bit different thing happening this time and why it's not going to work. We see Paul, he's going to be taking the other third base, which I find is an interesting choice of a third base to take. Uh, he's floating his third command center over at about 12 minutes. Again, this is like later than you would pl against a normal Zergling Baneling player, but at the same time, you need to be able to establish this third base and have it mining and have the benefits of a third base economy in like this early before the attack actually hits. Otherwise, you're just going to be contained on two bases forever and you're never going to have enough units. So it's just some good economic timings to know of. And once again, Paul is ever so diligently building that turret. It is for the burrowed roaches. I love how Paul always builds it. You, you should always have one there so that the roaches can't sneak up on your tanks. Because if they do that, they get on top of your shit and you lose all your tanks, you're just going to die. You're just going to die. <sighs> we see here, uh, Paul turtling super, super hard. He is mining off of all his bases, he's supply blocked, he's down in supply, everything's looking very normal. Uh, this 2-2 attack might be hitting slightly later. I don't think the Hydralisk upgrades are finished yet. I wish I could check, but I'm not the observer of this game. It would be really nice if I had the replays, actually. But at the same time, it doesn't bother my hands that much. And having an observer is better than being your own observer, definitely. Uh, let's just assume that Violet does have the Hydralisk upgrades and that he did not forget them. So, either way, he is going to be hitting a you know, pretty much maxed out timing at about 14 minutes. Let's see how similar that is to the last game. So, because he made the Nidus Worm, his attack is going to be slightly later. 
So at 14, 15, Violet attacks with a 200, 200, 2, 2 Roach Hydra army and starts Hive. Because he's going to start Hive right after he attacks, base. Or I think, no, I actually I think he delays it a lot, this game. Like, I think he should be starting the Infestation Pit about this time and take a fourth base, too. Okay, so this is, uh, we're in a similar supply situation as we were last game, but Violet's going to attack straight into these siege tanks, which is kind of just LOL. And we see here, Paul has four, five, six, seven siege tanks. I believe that's the same number he had last game. He might have just had six, but either way, about half of them weren't firing until the entire bio army died. Let's take a look now at how many, just take a, take a look and notice how many siege tanks are actually attacking in this engagement and the difference that it's going to make. And also the very, very shitty angle that Violet is attacking into. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah. So having the bio buffering there really seems to help. Yeah, and Violet's able to be pushed back. Pol holds. He holds very well. And it's all because Violet attacked into the shittiest possible fucking angle. And he was able to. And Pult's, all of Pult's siege tanks were able to fire on that. That could have gone a completely different way if Violet had attacked from, let's say, the third like from over here so like from a different angle it probably would have worked out a lot better but now Pult is in a good position he took a very good trade he's ahead in supply even Violet's not even starting as high if he's way too worried he needs to make units ASAP because he lost his entire army and he knows it that was a very bad trade for him so now Pult he's gonna be starting to slowly inch forward and applying pressure Notice how he doesn't get too greedy and like jump straight on creep, but he's going to stay right outside creep and try to like clear it as much as possible while like keeping his siege tanks alive and sieged. You can't let your siege tanks get caught out of position is a very important thing said by basically any Terran player who's lost to Roach Hydra. And Pult starting his fourth command center, actually it's almost finished, he probably started at around 15 minutes. We see here Pult's siege tanks are still sieged up, almost all of them in fact are, while Pult is just clearing away the creep. So he's still doing a, he's still taking similar precautions as he would against the Muta Baneling composition. And I 100% agree with him. This also allows him to stop counterattacks easier too. Violet's going for a counterattack here. Pult moves back a portion of his army. Now Violet, he, yeah, that's not a good attack. Violet is down a ton of supply. In the first fight Violet lost, he was up about 20 supply. Now he's down. Now the supplies are even. Sup uh, resources lost have in Pult's favor. And Pult has a monster army right now. Violet, he... Part of me wonders if he did make a hive and he had vipers, how this engagement would turn out. So he might be a bit uh, tunnel visioned right now. But for the most part... Yeah, he's just in a bad position, and he's really waiting for another 2-2 Roach Hydra army when he should be waiting for Vipers. So this was a very big mistake by Violet not teching into Vipers faster. And I like Pult's expansion pattern because him pushing this way rather than and like having expansions there means that he is keeping his expansion safe, and there's like basically no way that you could counterattack into the fourth base and like try to keep the Terran's economy limited. And that Nidus Worm does absolutely nothing. All of those units actually end up getting trapped there and they end up dying. And Paul, he's just in a very, very good fashion of this game. And that all stems down from taking one very, very good engagement. And that gave him enough time to max out on a very tank-heavy army along with a Bioforce but it's mostly a tank-centric army. And he does a slow push. Now he's on creep, but he has a very good positioning, so even though he's on creep, he's still going to win the battle. But he did do a very slow, methodical, like, wait until you're maxed out kind of push onto creep. Like, he still loses his battle, but at this point, he knows that Violet doesn't have a fourth base. He has a unit there. He had a unit, or he was pushing over here, so he knows there wasn't a fourth base there. So he knows that Violet's just on four economy, so that Violet's not going to be able to replenish his army as fast as Pult. The supplies reflect 
the accuracy of that statement. And Polk's just in full control of this game right now. It's not over, of course. If Polk gets caught out of position with his siege tanks, then he's going to lose the game. But as long as Polk keeps his siege tanks alive, Violet still has not teched up to Hive yet. I still seriously think that's a very, very huge mistake by him. At least, tr like... <laughs> I don't know. I just think he should have gotten a hive and vipers, and that would have made a very big difference in the fight. Having neutralizing like three or four of the siege tanks really makes a huge difference in these fights. But now we see Paul. He's not even in range of his siege tanks, and he's just destroying this army with his bio. Of course, three three finishes at a pretty pretty perfect time, but Paul does honestly doesn't even need that. He doesn't even have to go back into the line well I guess he does he, he doesn't have enough bio force to completely overwhelm uh, Violet's force but he does have a big enough army so that even though like his siege tanks were caught unseaged his 3-3 bio force will do more than enough damage to get rid of this bio and GG should be called any minute so good game whoopee Polt wins against the Imba Roach Hydra we got a bunch of notes here to sum it up so kind of a long video uh that's why i made a bunch of timing timing stuff so that you can watch the individual games and what the games consist of and like just the overall timings that happen during the game um, um, um what's the vod time it's 120 so 105 to 120 all right so yeah you use that as a benchmark if you have to come through and watch the video again so yeah uh, I know that Roach Hydra is very frustrating on ladder. I definitely raged at least a couple times today against Roach Hydra Viper just because it felt like I was banging my head against the wall. So hopefully uh, these timings and kind of taking a look more from Violet's perspective rather than Polt's perspective and why or how Polt was able to kind of like abuse Violet's timings like Polt uh, Holt did this too, and that's why he knew you have to have two siege tanks by the 1-1 one, one speed roach timing, and you should have about six to seven siege tanks at the time of the 2-2 yeah, two, two roach hydra timing, and I need to get a drink of water. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. A uh, couple announcements. So since I'm going to be starting school, I'm going to be keeping the episodes down to about one a week. I think I'm going to try to make them long like this just to get a lot of good content in. But for the most part, it'll be uh, less videos and longer and more quality. So, yeah, keep that in mind. And if there's any games that you guys want me to do, I'll try to do them as quick as possible. Like, just an individual go by the go over the game. Like, if a game happened in Pro League, that's cool or something. Just uh, leave a link about it and a question or whatever you have whatever you were wondering about the game and I'll try to get that done and put up on my channel as soon as possible. So, <sighs> I need water. Bye and good night and hopefully don't lose to this Imba Imba shit because David Kim is not going to help us anymore after he's ner or after he's buffed Terrence so much. All right, good night guys.